We spent a lot of time on our text inputs, on these transactions, and for the moment, I'm quite happy with the result. Now, as a next step, I want to make sure that this text input area here, here however, is not always visible, but instead, as we also planned it at the beginning of this section, it is shown when we press a button. A button that's added here in our action bar and a button here at the bottom, a so-called floating action button. And for that, we first of all need these buttons. So let's learn how to add buttons in the app bar or buttons on the overall page with the help of that floating action button feature. Let's start with the app bar. Here in main Dart, which is where I do render that app bar, on the app bar, you can add an actions argument and that takes a list of widgets. Now, theoretically, of course, you can add any widget in here, text or whatever you want. Typically, however, you add buttons here though, or most typically you add icon buttons. We haven't used that before. We worked with a raised button and we worked with the flat button, but there also is a, well, icon button. And the icon button does what the name suggests. It renders a button that only holds an icon. For that, we need to set the icon argument here and the icon argument takes, let's have a look. It takes a widget, but actually it wants a icon widget. Icon is a number widget built into Flutter. So icon is coming from Flutter and it gives us uh, a widget that in the end renders an icon. And it takes one positional argument, the icon data. So basically some information on which icon to show. And there we can use icons, which is a class provided by Flutter that gives us access to all the typical material icons. So here you can go through that list and conveniently here you see a preview of the icon that's, get, that's getting rendered. And here I'll use the add icon, which is simply a plus. Now on that icon here, you could also configure other things like the color of the icon or the size, but I'm happy with the default. And on the icon button, you can also configure other things. Most importantly, you need to provide on pressed just as you do it on other buttons as well. For the moment, I'll set it to an empty anonymous function so that the button isn't disabled but at the moment, of course, it also won't do anything useful. Here now we see that button and you can, of course, remove the debug banner here with the help of the Dart dev tools as you learned it in the debugging section, if it's annoying to you. I hope you can see the button here though. This is the button which when we press it should bring up a, a little modal, a, a bottom sheet here sliding in from the bottom, which holds this text input area. And it's not just this button. I also want to have that floating action button. We add this also with the help of the scaffold. There, besides app bar and body, you can also add the floating action button argument. By the way, you don't have to add that below the body. It doesn't matter in which order you provide these named arguments. Floating action button wants a widget as a child. And typically that is, uh, well, floating action button, which is a button optimized to be used as a, well, floating action button. You could use any button though, but I will go with the floating action button. And here I will also provide my icon, an icon widget, by using icons add. So the icon widget here is a normal widget and therefore can be used as a child in the floating action button. And then here on pressed, for the moment, I'll not do anything. If we now go back, we have that floating action button here in the bottom right corner. You can also change the position of that floating action button here with another argument you pass to scaffold. You can add the floating action button location argument and set this to floating action button location dot. And then you have a couple of options like center float, for example. If you save this, it now floats in the bottom center, which is really nice. So now we have this button here as well. We have the button up here. Let's next make sure that when we press these buttons, they bring up that, that sheet, which in the end can hold that user input area here. 